If you want to pass your data analyst interview, there's a few things that you're going to need to keep in mind so you do not end up failing that SQL technical portion of your interview. Now, the big thing here is when you get into that interview, it's going to be drastically different than all of the stuff that you've been doing when you've been going through the training. The reason for this is when you're out there practicing on your own, you're going to look at something that you're seeing on the screen, and a lot of people just kind of copy-paste what they're seeing. The other thing that happens is if you are writing it down and solving the problems on your own and you get stuck, well, you can just Google for the answer. The other thing that you're going to run into is that when you are running the code and you click on that little run button, you might get an error message. And that error message is telling you, hey, you've got a bug, go ahead and fix it, right? And you also have the luxury of seeing the output on the screen when you run that code. Now, when you get into an interview, none of that is possible. So what happens is when you go to that interview, you're going to have a hiring manager or the recruiter interviewer. They are going to send you a link and you're going to open it up on your browser and you're going to write code inside this little browser window. Now, when you get into the interview, none of that stuff is actually possible you're going to get a link that's going to be sent over by the hiring manager. You're going to click on that link, and it's going to likely open up a browser window. When you open up that link, the interviewer is going to send across a couple questions or maybe a question and then a couple example tables that you'll be working with. Now, it's up to you at that point to write the SQL code that answers the question that they're looking for. The problem is, you're not going to be able to run that code. It's just literally writing the text inside of a browser text editor window, and the interviewer is going to judge you based on what you write. So that means no going out to Google if you're not sure what to do. You can't run it inside of your IDE, and so that means you're not going to see an error message get presented back on the screen. The other thing is you're not going to be able to see the output either. So if you're to run that code and you usually rely on that to say, oh, the data looks a little wonky, you can't do that. So what does this all come down to? Well, it means that if you don't truly know the SQL code, when you're writing it, you're just writing it on the screen, hoping it works, hoping you don't have any bugs, and you're hoping it actually has proper performance. Now, I say hoping because without that knowledge, you're not going to know for sure. But the interviewer, they're sitting there looking at all the code that you're writing. They're seeing any bugs that you may have committed and missed. They're seeing potential performance issues with the way that you wrote the code. And they're seeing whether or not the code is actually clean looking and legible or if it ends up being some wonky looking code that would be really hard to debug in a corporate environment. The other issue here is when you're in the interview, the interviewers don't usually give you any sort of feedback to say, hey, you might have a bug here, or hey, I don't think that's performant code. Can you go ahead and write it a different way? Instead, what they'll likely do is just look at it, allow you to go through your same motions, and then they'll quietly judge you behind the scenes. So if you want to pass your SQL interview, it is really important that you truly know how to write that SQL code and you understand what that code is doing when it runs in the database, and you understand how that code could perform differently from other code that might be written.